Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit of the Wild Podcast, Blue Please on CynicalBrit.com. Welcome back to the Vortex Pinnacle, this time on Heroic Mode. As to why I'm doing this one first, well, it's mostly just because I got invited into this group. They said, do you want to come run this with us? And it's the first time we're going in. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll film it. Is that okay? And they're like, yep, cool. The European beta server right now is suffering from a crippling lack of well-equipped tanks, which means heroic groups are few and far between. That is a result of not having access to these item level 333 pre-mades that the US guys seem to have, because our pre-made queue has been broken for the last three weeks. As to why it's still broken, I have no idea. Anyway, they cleared the first three trash packs. There's nothing to see there, nothing challenging whatsoever. This was the first time that they've been through it, and of course you'll see the achievement as proof of that. Now we're looking at our first trash pack right here, which is the Cloud Princes. The Cloud Princes do pretty much the same thing, but the ads hit a bit harder. So the double Cloud Prince pull that we're going to be dealing with later will be problematic. And as you will see, it will also cause the tank to die. As regards to how many wipes we had in here, not all that many. Our equipment level is a little bit below what is recommended. It's recommended 333. I'm currently sitting on, not counting my trinket, which is pulling my eye level way down. It's still the Muradin Spyglass. Haven't got a replacement for that yet. It's around 325, not including that. So that's not bad at all. And these guys were varying between about 319 to 333. The tank was sitting at about 325 for this one. Now this you have to AoE really, really hard because as we discovered, those adds do a massive amount of damage in comparison to the normal mode and they completely annihilated the tank. The healer was not prepared for the amount of damage that was coming in. I don't really blame the healer for that at all. Hey, this is the first time through and you're obviously going to encounter wipes. If you don't encounter wipes on your first time through a dungeon, then either you are incredibly good or the dungeon is too easy, which more often than not is the case. We don't wipe too many times though in here, which is actually a little distressing. I mean, I will be showing you the whole dungeon, all of the trash, what you have to do for each pack, what you have to do for each boss, the changes in comparison between normal and heroic mode. And then, of course, I will no doubt complain about the fact that the bosses actually suck, which unfortunately is true. So this video might be a little bit ranty. Before that, though, there's some advice. Firstly, you just saw what we did there. We concentrated a lot of AoE on those little guys. You've got to take them down in this version. You can just ignore them in the normal, but in this case, that's not going to work out for you. As regards to our group composition, we have a Death Knight tanking right now. We have Hunter, Mage, and Warlock DPS. Warlock is highly recommended because most of the mobs in here are elemental, so being able to banish those is extremely useful. Shaman can also function now with their new spell, Bind Elemental. Our healer is a Holy Priest. Right. First boss right here. He has a model, as you can see. This is different from what it was in the normal mode video because that was all placeholder. What does he do? He doesn't really do anything new honestly. He does the big cyclone thing, and the cyclone thing does a massive amount of damage. Now, we thought initially, bearing in mind we hadn't done this, that you would have to run out of this shell. So we tried. No, it doesn't work. All the way to the edge of the arena, you're still taking damage. There is a tiny spot that we discovered that you can actually stand in where you shouldn't take too much damage. But all we needed to do here, we discovered, was just to stand in the middle and eat the damage. Now, when we first did this in the normal mode, we discovered that the bosses were not remotely hard, and I made the comment on the video that the mechanics didn't mesh well together. They seemed unfinished. It seemed like they had some neat tricks, but they would need to be meshed with something else in order to be challenging. Unfortunately, in the terms of this boss, that remains the case. All they've done, and this is lazy design, extremely lazy, is they have up to the damage that the Cyclones do, and that's it. He'll keep casting Lightning Bolts, Lightning Bolts, Cyclones will spill around, you won't take any damage here, and then they will come in, as you'll see, what we're just going to do is we're just going to stand in it. There we go, we're going to move back to that teleport spot right there, and we're going to eat it. And the Holy Priest is going to pop some Air of Effect healing. Now bear in mind, you can't do too much of that, because that does drain a massive amount of mana now. Greater healing takes like eight to 9,000 mana. They've redesigned the way healing works in such a way that you cannot spam the big heals anymore. They don't want you to do that. But that's it. That's all there is to it. And yeah, you do get the heroic achievement for killing that boss instead of the end boss. We don't know why that is. It was also the same in normal mode, as I recall. It's embarrassingly easy. I, our priest is in about 325 average item level gear. So he's using all normal mode stuff. 
bit of crafting. That's it. He's easily able to keep everyone up there. And I don't want to take away from the achievement of the healer. He's a great healer. I mean, this group is good, unquestionably good. They've obviously raided before and live. They are well aware of what's supposed to happen. But, still, you're looking at a fight that really can't do anything to you. Now, this trash pack. These lightning storms that I... Yes, I did deliberately stand in them because I want to see how much damage was done. I do move out of them later. They're not all that threatening. You don't really need to worry too much about that. But they have a cloud burst that does about 35,000 damage. I would strongly recommend that you attempt to interrupt this, as we discovered. Because it hurts a lot. Aside from that, it's not too hard to deal with. Just as long as you pop an interrupt on them, you should be fine. Now, the next pull is Imperian Assassins, which were absolute wusses in the normal mode, and I hope they'd up the ante on them, but as it turns out, they actually don't. They've got a stacking poison, which does nothing. <laughs> they also have a vapor form, which reduces incoming spell damage and also does nothing. You could very easily banish them or not, whichever you prefer. It's not going to make any difference. They can't kill the tank. You see the HP of the tank. It's not moving, so it's a non-issue. Now these guys, how do you deal with them? Well, it turns out that now you can move them out of the healing rain. You see, there's the area of effect of the healing rain. In the normal mode video, it expanded across the entire area. You couldn't move them out. So this is actually easier than the normal mode. It doesn't do anything. Which is shocking, really. I don't see the point in it. Now I hope these would do something special as well. They don't. You hit them, then you run past them. End of story. If it was supposed to be a trap, then it's a very obvious one, and I can't say I'm all that impressed by it. More ephemeral assassins, no problem there either. Now, a lot of you are going to be concerned after seeing the BRC wipe video. What is this? Is this a heroic? Well, I'm concerned about it as well, but... Bear in mind, a, there are nine heroics available right now, so... It's taking me a lot of time to sort of work through them and have a bit of experience in all of them, and I expect the videos to take at least a couple of weeks. With nine of them, I mean, if I can get out one every day, obviously it's going to be done in nine days, but that's not necessarily the case. It's about getting a proper group for it, it's about making sure we've got the tank for it, so it is time-consuming, no doubt. And that's assuming that the instant servers don't go down like they did last night, and we couldn't do Heroic DM, which is what we were aiming for. So, my experience so far, bearing in mind most of this is based on what people have said within my guild, is that Heroic BRC, Throne of Tides... Shadowfang Keep and Dead Mines are very challenging and very good indeed. Halls of Origination is pretty good. It varies. Some bosses are just not really all that great. Some are really cool. However, Vortex Pinnacle is lacking. So, right now the majority of content is heroic as far as I can tell. This is, as far as I am aware, the worst heroic in terms of how easy it is. I don't know if anyone's talked to me about the Tolvia yet. I don't think anyone's even bothered with it. It's not a very popular instance. Generally because it doesn't really have any amazingly fun mechanics involved in it. So people aren't prioritizing doing that. They're prioritizing trying to do DM and SFK. And of course Throne of Tides. Because we all knew Throne of Tides was a great dungeon to begin with. I've also heard some very good things about the first boss of Stone Core. Apparently the first boss of Stone Core is rock hard. Yes see the joke. It's good. It's fantastic. It's amazing. The, he has these clouds. You remember the dust clouds from the Stone Core video on normal. Those dust clouds will now kill you. So, you remember what I was saying about obvious mechanics should kill you? Well, it turns out Blizzard has taken that to heart. No doubt Blizzard believed this anyway. So, it's not like they took it from my feedback as much as I'd like to think that they did. But, yeah. Obvious mechanics should kill you. And that kills you. Dust cloud. Dead. You see it coming. If you stand in it, you are toast. Now, that's not to say that the trash here is easy, because it's not. The trash is, in many places, once again, harder than the bosses. You saw that we screwed up royally there. Took a massive amount of damage from the cloud bursting, didn't get the interrupts off in time. People ended up dying. I'm not saying that this instance is mind-numbingly easy. It isn't. It's obviously not easy. You do require some degree of focus, and obviously these guys playing right here... They know what they're doing. They're experienced. They are no slouches and they're certainly no scrubs. Hell, I'm probably the worst member of this team. So, I'm not saying that this is an incredibly easy instance, but what I am saying is that the bosses are disappointing as hell and lazy. 
Now I'm hoping that this is because they're incomplete and because they've opened this for testing and they actually want to make some modifications. But in terms of tuning, this is way under tuned. And it's not just that. It's not a case of it being way under tuned per se. It's a case of these bosses don't have enough mechanics for them to be difficult. I mean, like, for instance, this one we've got going up right here. Do you remember him? You should if you've watched the Vortex Pinnacle video. So here's what he does. He has three major abilities in the heroic mode. He can do a breath, which does a significant amount of damage. It was hitting me for about 60,000, so that's quite dangerous. He's got his upwind downwind mechanic that you remember from the normal mode. It's pretty important that you always stay upwind of him, because then you can do a massive amount of damage. It's a big speed buff both in movement and casting speed, as you can quite clearly see. And he's also now in heroic mode got these cyclones that will hit damage and knock you around. It, they're very easy to avoid. Here's the thing, though. This breath is much more dangerous in the heroic mode. And in order to avoid dying to it, well, what do you think? What would you do if there was an area of effect attack that was killing your group? Well, the answer is quite simple. Spread out. Make sure that it can't do it. Even then, that was our first ever attempt on this heroic mode, we knock him down to under, or about 25%-ish. So, that's all there is to the fight. It's not that tricky, so let me show you our second attempt, which was successful. What actually shocked me about this is just how short a lot of these fights are, particularly this one. He's got 2 million health, but he gives you this massive damage buff that seems to stack with time warp. So we time warp up Bloodlust, then bang, 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 out comes the damage. I mean, look at that. Obviously, I'm running that at 200% speed, but have a look at the clock in the corner, and it will show you just how short this fight really is. We're nice and spread out, so we're not taking too much damage. The healer's not having much of a problem there. I get breathed on, so I ice block to just help out the healer a little bit. We've got our little health stones there as well, and down he goes in under about a minute 40 seconds, give or take. Yeah. That's a nice necklace, however. Item level 346 is what you're to be expecting from Heroics, and it's what you are really, hopefully, going to need for entry-level raiding. And yes, Spirit is not a DPS thing anymore. It's nice to have a bit of regen, but it really is a healing stat now. So, yeah, you give it to the healer. That is the polite way to do things. But yeah, that boss is just... It's got nothing going on. I don't see how you could really fail that on a reliable basis. You know, we fail the first time because we don't know what to expect, and then we beat it the second time, which is the case with every boss in here. We're not learning anything. It's not like we lose the first time because it's hard. We lose the first time because we have no idea what it's going to do, and even then we almost killed it the first time. So I'm not really all that impressed by that. These packs in heroic mode, they're not that hard, really. Similar case of crowd control, the healers, and DPS down everything else. The healer does still have that sort of desperate speed kind of thing. It is not, as you can see, a magic buff. You cannot steal it and you cannot dispel it, so it involves interrupting the greater heals. The problem is, all of these servers are currently based in America, even the European one, which means we're pinging about 250 to this, and including that in your normal lag, it's actually quite hard to land an interrupt in time, because those greater heals are going off in easily under a second. So it's a little difficult to get the interrupts off, but again, what are they going to do? Once that buff wears off, which it does, that's it. They can't do anything. Now, these packs do get a little bit more challenging when they expand them, and we decide to use the grounding field here. Not that you really need to. We've got two marked targets for crowd control there. We're going to use improved fear on one of them, which you'll notice makes them tremble, which is very nice. They don't actually move around, and we're going to sheep the one there. Now, what they do have is an ability called Rally that you will see, and I do not believe this was in the normal mode. Rally will actually break healers out of crowd control, so that's a little bit dangerous. You might want to watch out for it. I don't think they do it on this pull, but I'm pretty sure they do on the next one, so you will see the effect of that in action. It can throw a spanner in the works, but it's not what I would call difficult by any stretch of the imagination. I'll resheep that one right there. I'm sure Warlocks are very, very happy to have that glyph that allows them to use fear without risk of pulling everybody. It's now a very reliable form of crowd control, and our Warlock on Mumble was stating that he was a big fan of it. The next pack is fairly self-explanatory. They will randomly shoot bolts out. You've got to kill them as quickly as possible. They tend to float around a bit, and they're quite difficult to do area of effect, because you'll see what they do. They sort of float around in a formation, 
They are almost out of area of effect range. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. I use Curtain of Frost to slow them down there, try and bring them together so we can land a little bit of area of effect. But honestly, Focus Fire is the best bet. They've got 75k health each. Just pick a target, nuke it, pick another target, nuke it, blah, 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 and that's it, done. Now, before we go on, I would like to address something that people were a little bit confused about. And, well, I say confused, trying to be smart asses about it. Oh, Total Biscuit, why do you never buff? Look at the top right. You see that little glowy thing with seven under it? Any of you who've used the PTR will be aware of what that is. It's a new UI feature that allows you to compile all of your buffs under a single icon so they're not covering the entire screen. So I have seven different buffs at this point in time. That only applies to so-called permanent buffs. Stuff like temporary stuff. You can see it right there. That stuff, the one with the big sort of short timer on it or the temporary stuff like Pyromaniac, that will appear outside of that. But class buffs like... Arcane Intellect and things like that, they will appear under that box. So yes, I am using buffs. Now, you did just see the effect of Rally there, which was rather annoying, but it just extended the fight. It didn't really provide too much of a threat, honestly. Bring them down without a problem. These grounding fields don't really seem to do an awful lot. It makes this pull a little bit more awkward, but really all you need to do here is just say get a hunter to pull, or even just a warrior to pull it bring them three steps forward, suddenly they can be cast on. It just means that you can't start with a CC, you've got to CC on the pull, which is a skill that most of you probably learned in vanilla and is not what I would classify as hard. So we'll do the pull here, bring them out of that grounding field because we can't cast while they're in it. And there we go, they move forward. If they didn't move forward, then that could be kind of annoying and tricky. Hell, if they want to make that really annoying, stick both healers in the grounding field, make sure they don't move, which would make the fight nigh on impossible. But hey, there you go. Shouldn't have too much of a problem bringing these down. It's kind of annoying, really, because these packs were okay. They were quite enjoyable, quite challenging in the normal mode. It's just either we've understood their gimmick to the point where it is completely negated, or they're just not as dangerous as they should be. I'm disappointed to see that they only added one new ability to these packs, the Rally ability, which is very easily negated by simply moving the mobs that you're killing away from the CC target. Not exactly what I'd class as difficult, but hey, there you go. I'm sure a lot of people are thinking to themselves, and they have the right to hold this opinion. I happen to think they're dead freaking wrong, but whatever. They can hold the opinion if they so desire that heroic content shouldn't actually be hard, because... For stuff that you want to repeat, you want it to be nice and easy so you can breeze through it on a daily basis. Well, for one thing, please explain to me exactly why you would relish the idea of breezing through stuff every day anyway. To me, like I said in previous videos, and I will say again, I'm not the best player in the world and I make mistakes, but I want to be punished for those mistakes, and I want to make sure the game is telling me you have to play better. You have to up your game. You are being forced to up your game because the encounters are hard and they will not tolerate your scrubbery. I don't want my scrubbery to be tolerated. It was tolerated in Wrath, and that sucked. And I'm sure that I got worse while playing Wrath as a result of that. But I don't see why you would want content that you can sleep through. It just seems ridiculous to me. And right now, Vortex Pinnacle is pretty much that. We're undergeared. Imagine what's going to happen when we're overgeared for this. This is going to be an absolute walkover. And thankfully, right now, it seems to be the exception, where there are loads of other heroics in cataclysm which are much better than this right now the final boss does he have a new gimmick yes he does the only thing he will do now in comparison to what he used to do is what you see there the static grip it grips you for about seven seconds static cling even now he'll create an unstable grounding field all you need to do is move into it now for some reason our guys got clinged an awful lot longer than i did I don't know why that is. I thought maybe there's some kind of talent that I've got that does that, but that doesn't appear to be. Maybe I'm just not paying attention, but I don't know. Maybe if it's a little bit randomized, they were not able to get to that in time. How do you negate that? It's not hard. He, we, they were all the way across the arena, which was silly. He usually creates that quite close to himself. So what you need to do is make sure that you are closer to him, but not close enough as to be chain lightninged. Now, just to make matters a little bit easier, you can actually use Dispel on this. You can get rid of it. So, a priest will be able to get rid of it. And indeed, I believe every healing class now has some kind of Dispel. I was just looking through my talent tree here to see if I'd got anything that would cause me to get out of that cling sooner, but apparently not. It's possible that you might be able to blink, but I didn't even bother because it wasn't a threat. Okay, and here is the final and successful attempt, which was, of course, the second one. You can very clearly see it there by the timer. We're not cheesing you. I didn't cut out three hours of wipes here. I'm not trying to push any kind of agenda that's false. 
All I'm saying is, and giving feedback on what I see, is the fact that this just seems to be too easy for a heroic. Now what we do here is we set ourselves up a bit closer to the boss, we try and spread ourselves out so that we don't get hit by chain lightning, and you'll notice the static cling gets dispelled almost instantly there by the priest. No problem at all. I get clinged over the side, I'm able to run across most of the arena before he casts that. Down comes the storm, doesn't kill anybody, he's already on half health, so we need to now spread out because we're getting hit by chain lightning, but it's only about 27,000, so it's not that bad. Spread out a little bit, do more damage, and that's it. Now, as far as I can tell, he calls for aid here, but he doesn't get it. I don't think Alakia likes him anymore. My feedback on this instance is that it is, quite frankly, lackluster in its current form. It was lackluster in normal, and it's lackluster now. It hasn't been upgraded to the level it needs to be. Blizzard needs to go back to the drawing board and have a very long think about how exactly they want to put forward heroic content. Because if this is what they have to offer, that is as bad, if not worse, than Wrath. My name's been Total Biscuit, and that was a look at the Vortex Pinnacle. Look forward to bringing you more heroic content, and I'm looking forward to bringing you stuff that's actually difficult. So, yeah. Like I say, big disappointment there for me. Not a fan of that at all. Just a bit of honest feedback. And honestly, if you can't handle that, please, by all means, go watch another video. I really do not care. This is what you're getting. If you don't like it, the door is to your left. I'll see you next time.